What's up everybody? My name is Steve Daria. I am a local real estate investor here in Southwest Florida. And uh, today I want to talk about seller financing because uh, throughout my career, both as a real estate broker as an, and a real estate investor, I've come across a lot of different scenarios uh, for home sellers and sometimes a straight up cash offer for a property is not necessarily the best or most beneficial offer for a home seller. So I kind of want to talk about the pros and cons of uh, offering seller financing as a seller. So we do buy properties. Um, obviously, we pay cash for properties. And the main goal with those are to fix up uh, properties in um, you know that have deferred maintenance. We fix them up. And then we resell them to the public. Uh, we bring them to the open market after they've been remodeled and uh, sell them on the open market. Now, the properties that we get in terms of uh, somebody offering seller financing, a lot of times um, we'll run the numbers. We'll run the numbers on the cost to basically fix up the property to get it into rentable condition. And then we'll run numbers on what the market rents are, less the uh, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, maintenance, and management fees, and take a look at what we would net at the end of the day. Um, so if you're a seller and you're contemplating on selling your property and uh, you are free and clear on your house, then uh, this could be an option for you guys to collect, uh, collect residual income. Uh, first thing I wanna talk about in terms of cons um, the, the negative aspect of offering seller financing is always the chance of the buyer defaulting on the loan, which is um, a really bad situation. So what we do is uh, we're professional real estate investors and we actually hire a, a loan servicing company. What this loan servicing company does is they actually collect the revenue from the tenant and then they actually pay direct to the bank and you would technically become the bank in a seller financing transaction. And a lot of times this is just direct deposit right into your bank account um, every single month on the date per the agreement, per the actual mortgage and note agreement. Um, so obviously if somebody is in default, then you would actually have to go through the judicial process of foreclosure in the state of Florida. It would basically be up to the courts to decide. It can be a lengthy process as well. And um, so you have to really be careful as to who you're selling a property to on seller financing. Um, I would highly encourage you guys to you know, find out a lot about the investor. Is it a big group? Is it one person? Are they heavily leveraged? They, do they have a lot of other assets that they're heavily leveraged on? Do they have funds in the bank? If, uh, you know, let's say the market turns and rent rates decrease, do they have funds to offset it? Um, how's their credit? How's their business credit? How long they've been in business? Um, these are a lot of things that I would want to know as a potential home seller becoming the bank in a seller financing transaction because the last thing you wanna do is go through this process and then have to go through the foreclosure process and then take the property back, which uh, is something that most parties do not want to do or to deal with. And um, when we're running our numbers and our financial numbers, we wanna make sure that we are cash flowing the property. If we're not cash flowing the property uh, uh, based on our analysis, then it's just not gonna make sense for us. Then we will not proceed with the deal. But the thing with seller financing is kind of cool is you can get creative in terms of how you structure it. You can create um, a longer amortization schedule, which could bring down the payment, which can make more sense for the income and expense ratio. Uh, you can actually change the uh, interest rate as well. You can lower the interest rate. So a lot there's a lot that could be negotiated in the transaction, especially if you want a higher price for the property, which leads me into the benefits of selling on seller financing is a lot of times people want a really high number for their property. Maybe they put it out on the open market. It's been sitting on the open market for a long period of time. And uh, we see this a lot, especially with properties that expired, meaning they were, were not successful in selling on the open market. And usually nine times out of 10, a property that sits on the market for a very long time, it's usually 
one of two things or a combination of, of both price and condition. And if the condition's really bad, but your price right, then the property likely will sell. And um, so a lot of times we will approach uh, expired listings of people that we know that uh, no longer have a mortgage and they want this really high price. In many cases, we can get them that higher price um, if we can get the correct terms. Terms meaning the right interest rate, the right amortization schedule, and so forth. And a lot of times, you know, we're overpaying in a sense. We're overpaying market value. But again, if we look at it in a just straight cash flow analysis, and we know that based on down payment, the amount of money that we got to put into the property to fix it up, and then our uh, cash on cash return, if all those formulas check the boxes, then in many cases we can get you a much higher number. Um, the next thing is uh, a lot of times you have landlords who own properties for a long period of time. Uh, we have some landlords who start out selling us properties just one or two at a time and then sold us more of their inventory as time progressed on seller financing. And a lot of times landlords, um, they don't necessarily outsource management or maintenance, they're doing a lot of the work themselves, they're kind of burnt out. And really, for a landlord, this is the best position to be in because you no longer have to deal with the leaky toilets. You never, never have to deal with tenants calling you. You never, never have to deal with you calling the tenants to track them down to get paid. So becoming the bank is really a superior position when you offer seller financing. So again, you have no longer have these landlord duties. Um, another pro is a lot of times we're able to um, put in an interest rate. So you're gonna actually collect interest on your money and uh, with a combination of getting that higher price. Sometimes the interest rate is not very high based on the price that we're paying. So we look at it as if we're front loading the interest into the purchase price, if that makes sense. So not, not, all, not always is somebody gonna get the best interest rate on a seller financing based on the terms that we need in order to safely uh, cash flow an asset. But it is good because you're getting um, you know, that interest upfronted on the purchase price so in any case, your money is making money in some fashion, whereas if you just took a lower cash offer, took that cash, what are you doing with that cash? Are you actually going to put it in the bank and let it sit there and not collect any interest? Or do you actually have a plan for that money? And some people do, and sometimes it makes sense for us to come in with those cash offers. We're happy to do that. But in many cases, the price is much, much lower. Um, Another uh, pro about seller financing is it's collateralized against a tangible asset, as opposed to say, you know, buying uh, single stocks. You know, when you're buying single stocks, you really don't know really who's control. Excuse me, who's controlling those companies? You know, how their balance sheets look? Are they hev heavily leveraged? Are they on the brink of bankruptcy? Like. It's it's the stock market can be uh, a little dicey when you're putting your money in there, as opposed to offer seller financing, where you're, where you know that your um, your debt, your mortgage is collateralized against that tangible asset. Um, and then lastly, and I think this is great for a lot of people, is um, it's especially uh, people maybe getting older, whatever the case is, where. They want to leave some. They want to leave their assets to their wives or their husbands or their children. And a lot of times, let's say for an example, you're a landlord and you own a handful of properties. You know, you're getting to an age where you're getting kind of burnt out and tired as well. But upon you know passing away, you want to make sure that whoever's inheriting the assets for from the estate is going to not have headaches and we see this a lot where sellers will, will offer owner financing and then say your wife or your kids take over that mortgage so now they are the recipient of those mortgage payments and they don't have to deal with the maintenance or management or headaches of owning a rental property 
or inheriting a, a property and then trying to figure out what they're going to do with it if they're going to rent it out or if they have to sell it and sell it quickly and maybe there's expenses associated with keeping the property and so forth so um, it could be a very uh, stable asset that your your heirs can inherit um, on your behalf and a really good clean situation for everybody involved so uh, anyway in the link uh, or the description below we have a link to our website if you guys have interest in receiving an offer or uh, you know a cash off or, or, or if you have interest in uh, talking further about offering seller financing we'd be happy to look at any kind of real estate uh, real estate deal that you guys have and uh, you can inquire there or you can call my cell phone number which is in the description as well you'll uh, talk to me directly and then uh, we'll set a time to come out take a look at your property and see what we can work on thanks a lot for watching and uh, i hope this helped you out see you